But what do we make of the stock of Viacom now that it's joining forces again with CBS? This huge media company owns Paramount, Nickelodeon, MTV, BET, and Comedy Central, among a host of other brands. Investors have been calling for a merger with CBS for years. But when CBS actually moved to acquire them in an all-stock deal, Wall Street didn't like the terms, and Viacom's shares have been slammed down nearly 25 percent in the last three months. Today, though, the company reported a strong quarter, capping off a year in which their film business returned to profitability. That's paramount, by the way. And their TV business grew for the first time in six years. Could this be the right way to play the upcoming Viacom-CBS merger? Earlier today, we had a chance to sit down with Bob Backish. He's the president and CEO of Viacom, and he'll be running the combined company. Take a look. All right, Bob, last quarter where it's just Viacom. Next time we see you, it'll be Viacom, CBS. What does the combination look like? Because that's now more important than what Viacom looks like. Well, look, we just reported our last quarter as an independent company, our fourth fiscal quarter. Uh, really pleased with it. We returned our domestic ad business to growth. We returned our domestic affiliate business to growth. We delivered full-year profitability for Paramount, all things we promised the street right. at the beginning of the year. So we're thrilled about that. But it is the road ahead that's so exciting. As you point out, we're going to be merging with, Viacom, with CBS. So Viacom, CBS will, um, the transaction will close early December. Okay. And then we'll be off to the races. Now, uh, you're in an oddity here. Your company is the second lowest P.E., price earnings ratio, in the S&P 500. Only Macy's is less. Uh, I look at all the things that you've done in the turnaround. What is Wall Street or a lot of our regular Main Street viewers missing? I think there was uncertainty about the transaction. Again, now we're going to close in early right. December. There's some speculation about how we're going to operate. Are we going to operate as a combined company? Right. I can tell you the road ahead, Jim, is tremendously exciting. We're deep into integration planning. We've already announced, for example, we're going to have one domestic ad sales force here. We're going to have one distribution arm. We're going to have one global product licensing organization. Just those three things on the commercial basis, bringing all our product together. In the U.S., we're 22 percent of prime time viewing, 20 percent of total day. Um, that is an extraordinary place to be. And bringing that to the marketplace in a single point of contact positions us to do great things. We are now in a world where people are more excited about the unbundle of yesterday Disney, uh, the idea of how much uh, Netflix has to spend. And those are the standalones that the young people like and that your model is the old model and it won't work. I look at it as that you have a different model, not the old model, correct? Absolutely. And we talked about it on our call today. We've been executing as Viacom on a strategy where we're serving the widest accessible market. Now, on the one hand, are we in the bundle business, big bundle, small bundle? Yes, absolutely. The majority, significant majority of homes in the U.S. still get television that way. So, of course, we're feeding that. At the same time, we're making original product through our studio business for, our, for the streaming clients. That's a great business for us. We announced a couple deals recently, including yesterday, another deal with Netflix. Great piece of business. We're also in the streaming business on an owned and operated basis, both through our uh, Pluto TV product at Viacom, which is the number one free streaming television product in the country. We just announced today 20 million monthly active users, up from 12 million in January. So that's 70 percent growth calendar year to date. Monetizing. On fire. Monetizing. So usage is growing even okay. faster than users, and monetization is already in the hundreds of millions. So that thing is a rocket. So we're playing all segments, and I think that's what makes us different. That gives us a better, uh, more predictable path to growth and a better ability to manage. So the naysayers who say, listen, Jim, you're too bullish down here because they have to spend five, six, seven, eight billion to compete with a Netflix, to compete with a Disney. That is not necessarily an accurate depiction of what will have to happen. Look, the naysayers said we couldn't return our domestic ad right. sales business to growth. They were wrong. We proved that today for the second consecutive quarter and for the full year. They said we couldn't return our domestic affiliate business to growth. They were wrong. They said we couldn't return Paramount to profitability. We improved profitability at $500 million in three years. Um, so they say we can't compete in streaming. They're absolutely wrong. We're bringing a different approach to the marketplace, one that combines free and pay. We're the leader today in free. We already have, particularly on a Viacom CBS basis, a nice bouquet of pay products. We'll use those on an integrated basis, and you'll see us prosper in that space as well. Now, a lot of people might say they're not well-funded versus Google, uh, versus Facebook, versus Amazon. One of those guys is going to wake up and say, I want to write a check 
to the NFL, and I am going to take away the principal blue chip asset that you have. Why won't that happen? Well, first of all, we're an investment grade company. Um, so we have a strong balance sheet. We're even stronger investment grade as a combination. But to your question on the NFL, CBS has a long-standing partnership with the NFL, and they get some very material value from CBS. One, broadcast carriage. The NFL is a mass market brand in the United States. It needs mass market reach, and broadcast television continues to be that. So that's valuable to them. Second thing the NFL gets is, and people don't talk about this, very high quality production. CBS doesn't produce one game a week for the NFL. They produce multiple games. This is live television, multiple cameras, very complicated production. It's how the U.S., and in some cases the world, see the NFL product. Very important to them, not easy to do. Now, enter Viacom, two other real sources of value, and I've spoken with the league about this. One is young audiences. Whether it's our linear networks or our on-demand product like Pluto, we bring young audiences to, the, to media, and that's important because they, too, are running that brand for a long time. They need to bring younger uh, right. consumers in. And lastly, international. Also, as part of a growth strategy, people want to develop their businesses outside of the U.S. You see the NFL doing that. Mm -hmm. Viacom has one of the definitive operating footprints, ex-U.S. in media. That includes broadcast assets in the U.K., in Latin America, and we serve 170 countries uh, overall. So we bring four very material things to the table, um, and that comes on the back of a long-standing, highly productive partnership. So I feel good going into that. Some things mystify people. South Park, unbelievable. Next week... You're leasing it away. Why lease a gem? Look, the um, content market is very frothy. Let's talk about how we think about whether we use IP for our own platforms or third party. We really think about three things. One is we look at the financials and how does doing a deal impact our ability to deliver our overall financial plan. Second thing is we look at strategy. How does using a piece of IP either on an owned and operated platform drive the growth of that platform, or potentially how does it drive the growth of other businesses like consumer products, like recreation, like um, downstream feature film activities. And third thing we think about is partnership. You know, how does a decision on a piece of IP impact a broader partnership either on the creative side or on the distribution side? opportunistic. So we look at the South Park deal, it was an opportunity to ring the register right. in this frothy market. We're very happy with the deal. Um, it does uh, ensure that we have broad reach uh, for mm -hmm. the franchise, which we think has other benefits. And um, both uh, AT&T is a big partner of ours, right. and the creators are big partners of ours. We have multifaceted relationships. We put it all together. We love the South Park deal. All right, one last question, Bob. You, uh, I had the privilege to meet Shia Redstone, a legendary figure. Uh, I went out to dinner with her. Thank you so much. We all went out. And she seemed to be very motivated and cannot be happy with a company that sells at five times earnings, a great growth company. What can an individual do in terms of just individual firepower, individual interest, as she can to say, you know what, this is, I'm drawing a line in the sand? Look, um, management, myself, we're not happy with the valuation of Viacom. Um, Shari also is focused on growing shareholder value. We believe the combination of these two great companies and our execution path going forward will really demonstrate the value. Uh, you know, there are material synergies here on the cost side and, more importantly, on the revenue side. And it's the revenue side that's the reason you ultimately do the deal. We see ad revenue upside. We see distribution upside. We see upside in global product licensing. We'll be one of the biggest dealers on the planet in a world where there's increasing demand for content and some of our competitors are pulling content off the market. And finally, we see upside in the streaming side through this combination of free and pay. I see that. Shari sees that. We're tremendously excited. We believe the marketplace will see that. And it, this is an incredible opportunity today to get involved with a super high-quality company. Well, people who know and follow me in Action Alerts know that I couldn't agree more. I don't understand the valuation after listening to you. I still don't understand it, I, except for to decide that the people who are selling are wrong. That's Bob Back. He's the president and CEO of Viacom. I hope you now understand why I said it was the most undervalued stock that I follow. And with 499 out of 500, I can't believe it because it's wrong. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.